Now, the latest on families separated at the border. A federal court has ordered that more than 2,500 children between the ages of 5 and 17 separated under the parent president's zero-tolerance policy be reunited with their families by Thursday. The Trump administration is working to meet that deadline. In a court filing last night, the administration also indicated that more than 460 migrant parents may have been deported without their children. The federal judge overseeing the government's plans is holding a hearing in San Diego now as we speak, and our Amna Nawaz has been listening in. And Amna, you have the latest. So first, you've got some new information on how quickly some of these uh, separated families are going to be reunited. That's right. The judge just got an update from the government lawyers. That call is still ongoing. He's getting an update as we speak. But basically, if they're dealing with the kids who are age 5 to 17, it was a group of 2,500 or so kids. About 1,600 or 100 of those were uh, declared to be eligible for reunification. The government said right now they've already reunified over 1,000 of those children. The judge asked, do you expect to meet the deadline to have all of those kids who are eligible reunite? by Thursday. That is the deadline the judge set. And the lawyer for the government actually said, yes, that is my understanding. That will happen. That's a little surprising because remember, Judy, even with the kids under five, they miss the deadline. They say they're going to meet it. So they're moving quickly. They are. Now, now back to this deportation argument. The yeah. ACLU, the government, they're making their arguments. What are you hearing there? So right now, the big number that caught our attention was 900. In the latest filing, the government said that they have 900 parents who are currently slated for deportation. And what that means is under the current rules, parents have basically two days to decide. I'm either going to leave with my child or without my child. Leaving without the child means they either go to another family member, to a sponsor, or they stay in government custody. The ACLU, the plaintiffs in this case, are saying they need more time. We want to extend that to seven days after reunification, give them time to meet with the kids, spend some time, talk to lawyers, figure out their options. The government's pushing back. They say they don't have time, they don't have resources to do that. But, but uh, what, the, uh, what we were talking about a moment ago, it turns out the government may have already deported, what, some 400 parents without their children. That's right. So 463 was the other number in the latest filing that caught a lot of people's attention. And interestingly, just a few minutes ago, in this latest call, the government still doesn't have a lot of information about where those parents are or under what conditions they were deported without their children. But you do have to think back to the kids under five of that group, which was a much smaller group. There were 12 parents in that group who were deported without their children. The government said they had a lot of trouble finding them and trying to reconnect them with their kids. You can't imagine how they're going to do that with 463 in this case. And as I understand it, the government is saying some of these parents said they were going to wanted to leave without their children. What, what do we know about That's that? That's right. All the parents have an option to waive reunification. The government gave the latest number so far, saying 127 parents agreed to waive that right. Judy, we have to remember in some cases the parents have to make the call that if I'm going to leave, maybe at least I'll leave my child in perhaps safer conditions than the conditions we were leaving in our home country. We don't have a lot of details beyond that in terms of what the circumstances circumstances were of them agreeing to do that, but that number right now is 127. Okay, finally, uh, you, Amna, you've been following uh, what's been going on with this little three-year-old girl separated from her grandmother, yes. what, almost five weeks ago, uh, five weeks ago at the border. That's right. Give us an update on Sophie. So uh, three-year-old Sophie had another call with her mother yesterday. It was about 10 minutes long. Her mother reports every time that Sophie basically cries and begs to come home each time they talk. Uh, her mother continues to move through the process. They have now caught the attention, this story, of a group called Immigrant Families Together. It's a small volunteer force that's connected Sophie's family with a number of local support groups. So they now have some kind of financial support. There's a GoFundMe account that started. They're helping drive them around to lawyers' appointments and fingerprinting appointments. They're in the vetting process. But Judy, it's important to remember, Sophie's now in about four and a half weeks. There's really no certainty ahead. The parents, or her mother still has to be vetted for approval. Sophie has to be approved for release. There's still some uncertainty ahead for this little girl. And we should say the video we were just showing was you following the grandmother and Sophie as they were attempting to come across the border That's right. some weeks ago. Amna Nawaz staying on the story. Thank you so much. Thanks, Judy.